Drum roll, please. Welcome to the first of my 2022 annual favorites videos. This is gonna be all about body, hair, and fragrance. We have a lot to get through today, so I'm gonna jump right in with nails. I love the Olive and June Nail Strengthener. I do this every time I paint my nails. I've just found that my nails are a lot less bendy and flexible since I started using this, so it's an absolute staple in my routine. It's $14, which I think is a pretty good price point. So if you're someone who has nails that flake, bend, or chip, I would definitely recommend adding something like this in your routine. A huge win for my nails this year was the new Olive and June Quick Dry Top Coat. This was supposed to coincide with any of their quick dry polishes, but I just use it on the regular Olive and June polishes and I find that it works extremely well. Not only does this make your polish dry faster, but this extends the wear of my polish beyond anything that I've ever experienced before. To the point where sometimes my nail polish lasts so long and just starts looking really dull that then I have to like sit there soaking my nails in nail polish remover. So it's really effective and I actually think it's more effective at extending the wear time of polish than it is reducing the dry time. To be honest, I threw out all my other top coats because there's just no reason I would reach for any of those over this. It's so good and I believe it is $7.50 and you can get Olive and June at Target. Also, if you ever wanna pick up their kits and systems, you can get 20% off with the code Kate20. My favorite polish of the past several years has been Olive and June CCT. I don't know how many bottles of this I've gone through. I think this might be my third or fourth bottle. It's the perfect sheer pink. It's not too pink, it's not too white, it's not too sheer, it's not too opaque, it's perfect. It's $9 and what I really appreciate about Olive and June's website is that they show each color on a bunch of different skin tones so you can kind of get an idea of how it'll look on you. The polish I'm wearing today is pretty simple similar to CCT. This is the London Town Perfecting Nail Veil in number four. It's not quite as shiny as a traditional nail polish. It just kind of looks like my skin or my nails, but better. So that's the bottle and the color of the Perfecting Nail Veil in four on my nails. It kind of just evens everything out and makes you look really, really polished and put together in a super natural way. And what's great about London Town's Perfecting Nail Veils, as well as their nail concealer, is they come in all different shades for all different skin tones. And these are $20 and I believe you can get them at Ulta. And lastly, I have really fallen in love with the Illuminating Nail Concealer in White by London Town, also $20. Is it really a nail concealer? Not so much to me. It's just a standard nail polish that looks really pretty. I get the idea of these like nail veils, nail concealers, kind of evening things out, but really I think they're just regular nail polishes. Either way, I really love this shade. I think you could get that glazed donut effect if you layered a chrome polish on top of this. So this one quickly became a favorite as well. When there are times when I don't wanna deal with the maintenance of nail polish, like if I'm going away on vacation for like a week, I will use the Olive and June Press On Nails because they last for minimum seven days. They have so many different sizes, so many different backups that you can use in each pack. I don't find that they damage my nails. They're super easy to remove if you just like soak your hands in warm water. Water. I take a lot of baths, so if I keep my hands in the water, these come right off. The Olive and June Press-Ons are $10. They come in tons of different colors, sizes, and shapes, but I always go for extra short because I've got stubby little nail beds. My favorite affordable body lotion this year was the Naturium Biolipid Restoring Body Lotion. This is $15, and you can get Naturium at Target. I love this because it's not a light cream, but it's not a super rich cream, so it's right in the middle. Great for daytime, great for nighttime, great for summer, great for winter. It's even richer than the Necessaire body lotion if you've tried that. This is also fragrance free. I would say this is kind of like a thinner version of a body butter. There's kind of like that richness, that kind of whipped quality to it that I really appreciate. So it is quite nourishing, never greasy, never heavy, never sticky. I love it. But if I truly had to pick one favorite body lotion I would use for the rest of my life, it would be the Josie Moran Pro Retinol Body Butter in the uh, vanilla bean scent. It's $46, so it's really expensive for a body butter, but I am just so in love with the texture of this product. For being a body butter, it has a very thin texture that's also got a beautiful dewy finish. And that's why I love this so much because it is really nourishing and so deeply hydrating, but because it's thin, it's super, super spreadable which means it cuts down on the amount of time that I have to sit there spreading body lotion into my body. I'm so lazy when it comes to body care. If I have a lotion that like takes a little bit of time for me to rub in, I'm never gonna use it. The smell is also really nice. Just kind of like an earthy vanilla, really just to mask the scent underneath, which is pretty funky. I really didn't like the unscented version. Just a heads up though, there's no retinol in this. I believe there's some 
plant retinol they're calling it. Maybe it's Bacuchiol. I can't really remember what it is because there are no ingredients on the package, but there is a little bit of misleading marketing going on here, but I don't care because I just love the texture so much. A product that started out as a fail and then eventually turned into a favorite is the Salt Air Body Wash in Lush Greens. This is their little travel size, which is $7, but they have a bigger size for $12. And I really just ended up falling in love with the scent. For me, the formula of a body wash is a body wash. I've never met a body wash I hated. I never met one I loved. If it gets me clean, I'm good. At first, I was really put off by how heavily fragranced Salt Air products were. I can't use any of their deodorants because all you can smell is the fragrance of the deodorants. And like, I wanna smell my perfume. Same thing with the body wash. When you get out of the shower, you can still smell it on your body for a few hours. But strangely, I grew to love that because I just fell so head over heels in love with the lush green scent. And this has notes of dewy palm leaves, juicy pear, and sunny lily. It is so fresh and juicy, almost tart. Definitely the kind of scent profile that I prefer for body products, something like fresh and slightly fruity. Absolutely picking up a full size of this. Just be warned that Salt Air products are very heavily fragranced. My favorite deodorant is the Necessaire deodorant gel. This is $15 and it's the fragrance free version. This has 5% AHA, so you get a little bit of exfoliation underneath your arms, which should help with any razor bumps you might get. But AHA also kills odor causing bacteria. So I'm totally hooked on this. It's really effective. I do prefer a little bit of fragrance in my deodorant, but sadly the only other version they have is the eucalyptus scent. I found that like a little musky, a little herbal, a little medicinal. It was like not my favorite eucalyptus scent. I like something that's more fresh, like minty eucalyptus. So what I do is I put a layer of this down and it's great because it's just a clear gel and that's all I need if I'm staying home. But if I'm going out, then I'll just pop on a little bit of like one of my favorite deodorants that's scented. And my favorite scented deodorant is Kaya's The Take Sumi Detox Deodorant in English Mint and Lime. It's $20 $25 and it is a charcoal formula so it can leave some white stains if you're wearing black clothes but the smell of this is one of my like top five favorite smells of all time. Mm. Kaya I beg you please make this scent in a shampoo, conditioner, body wash, body lotion, anything. I love the way this smells. The deodorant itself doesn't necessarily do much other than to kind of like mask odor, but I just love the way it smells and the way it makes my body smell. And my other favorite scented deodorant is Salt and Stones Bergamot and Eucalyptus. This is the kind of eucalyptus I like. It's very, very fresh, very light, really not offensive. And this is $20. It's also clear, so you can wear it underneath black clothes and you're fine. And I also really like their Suntal scent as well. My favorite dry shampoo of 2022 was the Moroccan Oil Dark Tones Dry Shampoo. This is $26 and they also have a travel size, which I have right here for $12. I don't really notice a difference between the light tones and the dark tones, but that might be because my hair is a kind of like bronze right now. This makes my hair a lot more clean without adding any like heaviness or grittiness to it. It doesn't leave a really bad white cast on me and I love the smell of Moroccan oil products. And I find that their scents are never too overpowering. Like I absolutely cannot use products, especially anything in an aerosol form from Whey, Amica, Dry Bar, and a couple others. I find that really Moroccan oil, Verb, and Bumble and Bumble are kind of like mid-level fragrance brands. So those are the ones I tend to stick with, but Moroccan oil to me smells the best. But personally, I don't think that anything gets your hair as clean as a non-aerosol dry shampoo powder. And my favorite is the Kristen S dry shampoo powder, and this is fragrance free. It's only $13 and you can get it at Target. And so it just comes with a little pump and then you just boop, spray it in your hair and kind of tap it in. I always find that dry shampoo powders have the least white cast out of any dry shampoo. So they work on a lot of different people. And I do prefer this one now to my previous favorite, which was the Odell dry shampoo powder. The pump on that one kept getting stuck, but I don't have that issue with this one. So if you're looking for something that really gets your hair clean, I actually think that this is your best bet. I'm gonna share three of my favorite texturizing sprays and my absolute number one for years has been the Oribe dry texturizing spray. This bottle is the full size for 49. And I also have their travel size for 24. This is my special occasion dry shampoo. I use it if I'm going on vacation, events, you know, anything special where I want to look and feel my best. But it's $49, which is quite a lot of money for me to spend on my hair. I'm not a hair person. However, I do find that compared to the other texturizing sprays I'm going to talk about, I can use less of this product because it's more effective. So the price per use might actually even out. I'm not so sure how to do the math on that. I just love the way this makes my hair feel. It's never gritty or crispy. It's not like too intense. It still has a really soft finish throughout it. 
but it adds a beautiful amount of texture and a little bit of volume. And I really like the way Orbe products smell as well, and I never find them to be too overpowering. My second favorite is the Moroccan Oil Dry Texture Spray. This one is $30, so definitely a lot more affordable. Pretty effective, not quite as effective as the Orbe, but honestly, I think it does a really good job and it's a better price point. I do really like the Verb Volume Dry Texture Spray. This one is $20, and I just find that compared to the others, this does make my hair feel a little bit crispier. Not that it makes my hair feel crispy, it's just not quite as soft as the others, but for $20, honestly, it's pretty good, and Verb products are barely fragranced, so if you have a sensitive nose like I do, Verb is a great brand to try. Kind of just depends on what you're going for and what your price point is. A product my hairdresser forced me to purchase recently is the Olaplex Number no. 8 Bond Intense Moisture Mask. I am slowly in the process of going from bright platinum golden blonde to about a mid-level brunette. And she said that the cuticles of my hair were just so blown out that I really need to start treating them better. And so she recommended that I purchase this. And I used it last night and I do think that you can see my hair looks a little bit shinier and a little bit healthier than usual. You apply it on clean damp hair, let it sit for 10 minutes, then rinse it off. This is my first introduction into Olaplex. I'm also now using their Bond something shampoo. And so I'm hoping that over time I see the health of my hair improve. Oh, and this is $30. Let me tell you, I breezed through the body and hair section because now we're onto perfumes, which is my favorite part. This is $205 and it's their Cologne Intense. And you can tell that because it comes in the black bottle. Most Jo Malone fragrances last like five minutes on me. They're so light, but not with this one. It's really long lasting and I think it's a unique special scent. The website says, this deliciously sensual scent opens with a dash of cardamom and the freshness of grapefruit tea, ushering in the earthy depths of native vetiver. Precious vanilla bourbon warms and envelops, hand-picked from the orchid-sown jungle. Oh shit, that's special. It's equal parts cardamom, grapefruit tea, vetiver, and vanilla. Like I smell all of the notes throughout the entire experience of this wearing on my body. This is so sexy and it's unisex. Anyone can wear this. Definitely check it out on Fragrantica because it has rave reviews and I've never heard anyone else talk about it. I just think it's absolutely fantastic. And I always notice that John hugs me a little bit longer when I wear this one. But if I had to pick a signature vanilla, it would definitely be Diptyque's Eau Dwell. This is also $205 and the top notes are pink peppercorn, juniper berry, green cardamom, and a lemmy. Middle notes are frankincense, calamus, black Ceylon tea, base notes of bourbon vanilla, fernat vanilla, Haitian vetiver, and cypress. So there is some similarity between those. Odwell is spicier and also very much more prominently vanilla, whereas Jo Malone vetiver and golden vanilla is more woody, more unisex, and just a little bit more complex. Normally I don't like pink peppercorn in fragrance because I find it to be like way too sharp and astringent, but it's a tiny hint of pink peppercorn that really complements the cardamom. So it's not overly spicy, it just adds a little bit of complexity and like a unisex quality. You have vetiver in this one as well as black tea, same with vetiver and golden vanilla. So I would say between the two, if you want something that's more prominently vanilla, go with Odwell. If you want something more unisex, a little bit more unique and interesting, go with Vetiver and Golden Vanilla. My number one night out, I want to wear something that no one else is wearing perfume is Diptyque's Orphean. Although that might change soon because Phoebe Bridgers just shared in an article that this is her signature scent. So I have a feeling everybody's about to start wearing this soon. This is very woody, very smoky, very powdery, it's really interesting. This is based on a scent memory that the founders of Diptyque had when they used to go to this bar called Orpheon in Paris in the 1960s. The, the website says, freeze frame, curls of tobacco smoke mingle with powdery trails of blusher, lingering on burnished wood. At the heart of the composition is the atmosphere of that unforgettable place, recognizable through the warmth of the tonka bean, the depth of cedar, and the vivacity of juniper berries. You totally get the sharpness of the juniper berries, which if you don't know is used to make gin. You get strong notes of powder blusher, like classic, like 1950s shit kind of blush. And then it's smoky and woody. So it's very much a unisex fragrance. I always feel really interesting and mysterious when I wear this one. It's definitely one of the most unique fragrances in my collection. And my more year round everyday staple has become Commodities Gold Personal. What's great about Commodity is they have three different levels for each perfume. They have a personal, an expressive, and a bold. And first the personal is just a few core notes 
very simple, and then each level builds on that with more and more notes, depending on how strong and how complex you want your fragrance to be. This is the travel size for $35, or you can get a full size for $135, and all this is is ISOE Super Sandalwood and Vanilla. And ISOE Super is a molecule that's basically kind of musky, and it's supposed to smell different on everybody. Personally, I actually can't smell ISOE Super, so it just smells like water to me. All I can smell in this is sandalwood and vanilla, but someone else might smell the ISOE Super in this and think it smells different. But to me, I smell sandalwood and vanilla and it smells fucking great. I get compliments on this all the time and when I tell them that it's basically just sandalwood and vanilla, people are like, whoa, that's weird. I don't normally like vanilla scents. To me, there's something almost milky about this one that I really appreciate. It's like a, it's like a creamier vanilla, whereas the others are kind of spicier, woodier vanillas. This is like a creamy one. There's never an inappropriate time to wear this. It always smells good. And I have a feeling I'm gonna have to pick up a full size bottle of this. Moving on to more warm weather scents, we have Skylar's Coconut Cove, and this is just one of my all time favorite fragrances now. This is 29 for a little travel size, where you can get a full size for 85, and the top notes are bergamot, cardamom, hibiscus, nectar, and twist of lemon. Middle notes of coconut, jasmine, petal, gardenia, and lush greens. Base notes of ambrox, coastal woods, heliotrope, and vanilla orchid. There is some interesting complexity in here that I really appreciate. I do smell the coconut most prominently, but then there's a muskiness that really comes through. I think it's the ambrox maybe the coastal woods as well. It's kind of musky and woody. So that does make it more year round appropriate, but I just tend to associate coconut with warm weather. And then it is so beautifully balanced out by some of these floral notes and the fruity notes. It's really just like, one of my favorite fragrances of all time. I also love Ellis Brooklyn Sunfruit and that color of the packaging just really speaks to my soul. This is 32 for a travel size or you can get a full size for 105. The top notes are fig, bergamot, plum leaves, and pear. Mid notes of hand-picked jasmine, cyclamen, orris, and orange blossom. Dry notes of amber, vanilla, musk, and coconut. At first I didn't like this because I was expecting it to be a little bit more like Dies and Durga's Debaser, which I'll talk about next because both are very fig prominent perfumes. This has a lot of floral notes that kind of threw me for a loop. With the name like Sunfruit, I was kind of expecting something that smelled like really hot and juicy and melty, like fruit dripping down your skin. But really this is actually kind of more of a year round appropriate one because it's not just fruity and it's not overly sweet. You really do get this prominent fig note, but it is so perfectly balanced out by all of the florals, a little bit of that vanilla and coconut. And to me, what I smell the most are fig, pear, coconut musk, and then a little bit of florals. It's just absolutely beautiful and definitely my favorite from Ellis Brooklyn. My other favorite fruity scent is Dies and Durga's Debaser, and this is $75 for a travel size, and they have other sizes on the website. The top notes are bergamot, green leaf, and pear stem. Heart notes of fig, coconut, and iris. Base notes of blonde woods, tonka bean, and moss almost exactly the same notes as Sunfruit with a couple variations. The difference is that this is like hot weather, fruit is melting in the sun and there's like sweat dripping down your face and you're in the middle of like a lush field and there's like bees buzzing everywhere. It's just, it's like a hot weather fragrance. The green leaf and pear stem really comes through here. So it's like super, super green and you get that kind of juicy tart fig note rounded out by the coolness of the coconut milk. It's such a special one, I just love it. There are so many sunscreeny perfumes out there, but by far my favorite is Vacation Ink Signature Perfume. This is $60 and you can get it on Ulta. And it's very light, so I have a very sensitive nose, but you can see I've sprayed so much of this because I can spray two whole spritzes and walk through it and then spray some more later on. I find anything with a kind of sunscreen note fades very, very fast, so just be aware of that. But for me, it's great because every other fragrance I own or that I've ever tried, I can only do like a tiny tiny little dot and any more than that and it's too much and then John is like, oh my God, can you take that off? I have a headache and it's like a whole thing. So this one's kind of nice because I can never overdo it. And this is very special. It has notes of coconut, banana, pineapple, orange blossom with classic poolside notes of pool water, pool toy and swimsuit lycra. I guarantee if you smell this, you will be sent back to some kind of childhood, hot weather, summer memory. You get the coconut, the pineapple, the banana, but really it's the specialness of the lycra and the kind of chlorine notes coming in that make this a total crowd pleaser. I get a lot of compliments on this when I wear it in the summertime. And they also just launched the candle version of this. It's a limited edition candle, but the permanent candle on their website, Pool Boy, 
smells exactly the same. So maybe just go for pool boy instead. This just, it does something to me when I smell it. When I smell this, I just, beg for summer to be here already. It's just, it's really special. And my last favorite perfume of the year was Ellis Brooklyn Salt. It's $32 for a travel size or 105 for a full size. And the top notes are ylang ylang and violet, mid notes of Tahitian, tiare and magnolia, dry notes of musk, ambergris that's vegan and sandalwood. The scent memory of this is like, you are on a hot sweaty run on the beach in Hawaii. Ambergris is normally whale vomit or whale poop, but Ellis Brooklyn is vegan, so their ambergris is sourced through something called Nature Print. And that's what gives this a kind of like skin-like funk to it. And then when you pair that with just a whole bunch of tropical florals, you get a really beautiful, pretty unique scent to me. This is something that I have to be in the mood to smell. Floral notes sometimes give me a headache or they make me kind of nauseous. Smelling this right now, I actually got a little bit nauseous. So I have to be in the mood for those tropical florals. But when I am, I can't stop smelling myself in this. It's just, it's fantastic. It's really interesting. And another, another fave from Ellis Brooklyn. Those are all of my 2022 body, nail, hair, and fragrance favorites. Mm. I just love talking about perfume. I'm in like such a good mood now. It's the best thing ever. No one ever watches my perfume videos. They get like 1000 views max, but I don't care because they're my favorite to film. Stay tuned for the next installment in this series, which will be my 2022 skincare favorites. And then my makeup favorites will be a two part series. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. And if you made it this far, I appreciate you. Hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.